So good morning. I I thank the um, Finance Malta for uh, having invited me to this uh, very distinguished conference that I understand is now at its very sixth uh, occasion. Well, as I say, this uh, is a pleasure for me, uh, in particular because it was an opportunity for me to visit Malta. I've been born in uh, Genoa, which is a Mediterranean town. Uh, I feel very much, uh, let's say, an intimate relationship also with all the other Mediterranean, uh, let's say, towns and country. So um, today I was asked uh, to come to uh, speak about the banking union. The finance minister highlighted the importance uh, of this uh, project, uh, not only for countries that are actually in distress situation, but for all countries, uh, for a forward-looking, uh, let's say, good growth uh, of, uh, of Europe. And uh, I have to start by saying that uh, the problem of supervising banks uh, is, uh, as we know, an old problem. It's something that originated from the early beginning of, uh, let's say, of the uh, um, start of the banking business. And uh, please allow me to quote some, some words that are from, uh, let's say, one century ago, that, uh, in which uh, uh, President Truman was, uh, uh, let's say, highlighting the need for having a public intervention to regulate the banking business. And uh, later there were, uh, you know, some, some uh, coming from the from public statement, some, uh, uh, let's say, not a nice statement about the banking situation, about the way in which bankers were acting. However, these are not uh, very recent because they're still coming from President Roosevelt, 1933. So this to show that uh, there was always a struggle between the way in which uh, the banks were uh, uh, acting and behaving and prospering and the way in which the, the public uh, uh, sector was trying to, let's say, to regulate the, um, this very important activity for the economy. But now, let's now turn to the subject of my presentation, which will be the banking union, and uh, in particular the single supervisory mechanism. Because uh, first I have to highlight that the banking union is a, a very huge pro project that must be seen in a broader context, of a, a number of initiatives uh, that are going to strengthen the economic monetary union. There was some kind of unfinished job there, already when uh, preparing the Maastricht Treaty, there were some uh, very distinguished people that were asking for having also some elements of uh, uh, common banking supervision. But uh, for political reasons, this was not uh, something that was made. Now, we can see this as a final fix uh, of a project that was starting in the 1980s. And the main elements uh, of the uh, restoring the European Monetary Union are the banking union, which I will speak in a moment, the fiscal union, the economic union, and the political union. That's also a very important element because we have always to, always to strengthen the democratic accountability of all uh, this uh, construction. Otherwise, uh, the, this construction will not be built up on solid roots. As regards the banking union, uh, there are three main pillars. The first, the single supervisory mechanism, on which I will develop further in a moment. The other two very important is the single resolution mechanism, the single deposit guarantees. The finance minister has mentioned the importance of the single resolution mechanism. On this, uh, I cannot uh, say much because the commission is going to present a proposal in uh, July. So uh, for... Uh, our point of view is a very important part of the banking union insofar is uh, helping to uh, reach what is the main aim of the banking union. So first, uh, to break the adverse feedback loop between sovereign and the financial system. And what we saw happening the last month in uh, certain country was uh, having this uh, adverse situation affecting coming from sovereign affecting banks uh, on vice versa also to stop the defragmentation of the single market. That's very important, in particular for us, for our monetary policy. Indeed, it's an issue also for, for the funding uh, for the situation of financial markets. And uh, finally, as we know, according to a statement of the leaders uh, in June last year, this is also a precondition for bank recapitalization through ESM. So let me allow now to develop on the let's say, on the single supervisory mechanism. I look to the state of play. The, the project is uh, started in uh, June 2012 when the Euro Area Summit Libre requested 
and agreed to set up a single surveillance mechanism. Then in September, the European Commission presented a legislative proposal, and the process was very quick, also because there was intensive you know, political pressure, as you can imagine, and uh, we have now at the conclusion of the process, because right in, uh, at the end of March was a conclusion of a trialogue. And the uh, regulation is expected to be uh, formally adopted and published, uh, uh, let's say, around July. So the single supervisory mechanism is uh, um, a project according to which the ECB will be conferred with uh, certain tasks and powers in the field of prudential supervision on credit institutions. So first, uh, this does not concern non-banks, this concerns only credit institutions, and second concern only prudential supervision. So other tasks that are now made by national authorities, such as uh, conduct of business, money laundering, and so on, are not touched by this project. However, in the field of prudential supervision, the transfer of uh, task is uh, quite uh, massive in the sense that all the main tools, all the main supervisory tools are to be transferred to the ECB, starting, let's say, from the uh, birth of institution, the initial authorization, then going on with the uh, all the uh, different steps, all the different tools that are part of the supervisory tool toolbox. And the ECB, uh, we'll see in a moment how this will be developed, will have the power to um, use, uh, let's say, early intervention tools. So in the moment in which there are problems, the ECB will have the power to act. However, we will, is it not uh, including also resolution powers, because this is, will be part uh, of the uh, toolbox of the European Resolution Authorities, and when the other part of the banking union, the European uh, Resolution Mechanism, will be set up, then it will be part uh, of the tools of the European Resolution Authority. Also part of the task attributed to, in part, to ECB is uh, concerning macroprudential. We know the importance of macroprudential supervision, actually, is one of the key lessons from the financial crisis because there was no, let's say, clear focus from the supervisor on the risk stemming from uh, contagion, from, uh, let's say, uh, elements outside the uh, supervised perimeter. So here the political agreement was to retain the national competence as a first, uh, let's say, um, line of intervention. However, there is a coordination framework according to which national authorities have to notify the ECB with what they are doing, and this might trigger a dialogue with ECB, but also um, to, uh, let's say, to uh, counter, to address possible inertia from national authority, there is a power of ECB to apply higher requirements, to, so to say to the national authority, this is not enough, you need something more. And uh, again, this might trigger, a, let's say, um, dialogue with the national authority. This is very important, the macroprudential, let's say, pillar is very important because it's also allowing a bit more of flexibility in a structure that otherwise would be, might be not uh, addressing the needs for uh, specific countries. As a the scope, uh, one of the main controversial, uh, let's say, point uh, since the beginning was the scope because uh, VCB fundamentally, as regards the power and governance, is a euro area institution. So we have no power outside the euro country, no statistical power, no sanction power. But the political decision, rightly so, was to have a project at the European level. And uh, this, uh, um, let's say, conundrum was uh, solved by establishing the right for uh, out countries to join the SSM by establishing a close cooperation agreement. So basically, the uh, non euro country, if willing so, will uh, um, ensure appropriate legislation according to which uh, the, their own national authority will, uh, let's say, follow the instruction by the ECB and will provide all of the information related to their own credit institution. And uh, also, it is provided that uh, um, the um, uh, non euro member state might decide to terminate the close cooperation after three years. So, there is a difference in, uh, let's say, in the position between euro area and non euro area country because euro area countries cannot go out of the supervision of ECB even if they don't like it, while the non euro area country may do so if they so wish. 
There are safeguards for a single market, however. There, is, uh, there are some provisions on versus some decision making that we'll see in a moment. As also, very importantly, the European Banking Authority will retain its tax task in setting out the standards on the banking regulation for uh, all the European Union. And the governance of EBA was, uh, is going to be changed to ensure a fair balance between, let's say, the group of the same countries and the, those countries that are not willing to, to participate. Now, let's look to the scope of SSM in terms of uh, which banks will be covered. Um, of course, I'm not uh, uh, listing my slide names here, but just listing the criteria that are in the, in the regulation. And there is a big distinction between uh, significant and not sign a less significant uh, credit distribution. The significant credit distribution are, uh, let's say, to be identified according to certain criteria related to size, so more than 30 billion um, assets, also the ratio between asset GDP, and then the importance for the economy of the of European Union or for a member state. Also, uh, within the scope of SSM will be those uh, credit institutions that will be eventually um, subject of a direct financial assistance from the ESM. And also, the ECB will retain the power to um, decide that uh, any institution, if it is not, uh, let's say, fulfilling this criteria, should be subject to this more, let's say, centralized supervision. Also, there is a criteria that, according to ECB, will exercise supervision on the three most significant banks. So, notwithstanding, uh, if there is a, a country in which uh, none of these criteria will be fulfilled, notwithstanding this, the three most significant banks will be, let's say, uh, kept uh, by this regime. And, uh, all the details of the methodology will be published, and uh, this will happen uh, six months after the publication of the um, of SSM regulation, and there will be a public consultation on that. According to the methodology to be published, there will be, of course, a list of banks that will be uh, fulfilling the criteria. Then there are the less significant credit institu institutions for which uh, for which uh, the National Central Authority will be responsible for direct supervision. However, also as a gas significant credit institutions, the National Authority will retain a very, very important role. The SSM regulation highlights very strongly the fact that the National Competent Authority will be responsible for the preparation implementing activities. And uh, all the, let's say, framework uh, according to which this uh, coordination will happen will be enshrined in a regulation that is also to be published uh, uh, by six months, by, uh, within six months by the publication of the SSM regulation on which there will be also a public consultation. So I think it will be a wonderful moment for the industry to also to uh, express their own comment about this. Of course, this methodology is now under preparation in close cooperation with all the national competent authorities. As regards the scope of SSM, uh, I have to say, however, that uh, to be a less significant bank does not mean to be completely outside the reach of, uh, let's say, of this broader SSM framework, because uh, in any case, uh, the, um, there will be uh, the duty of the national authority to keep the ECB informed of what is happening. The ECB will uh, issue regulation guidelines according to which all the banks in the system have to, let's say, uh, they have to comply uh, with this regulation. And also there is an overall oversight by the ECB on the functioning of the system that could go so far as to uh, decide to request, as I mentioned before, direct supervision over additional credit institution. So that uh, is very much, uh, I think I want uh, really to stress today, is that there is not uh, a two-tier system, as somebody say, but it's really a single supervisory mechanism encompassing all banks, but with different, uh, let's say, level of responsibility and res decision making according to the different needs uh, of supervision. So as regards the governance, uh, the, again, the, um, as I said before, the ECB being an euro area country, um, euro area institution, was necessary to adapt their governance because uh, the ultimate decision making body of, a, of a ECB is the governing council, in which they are also governed by Bank of Malta, and uh, is made also by euro area governor. So the decision was to uh, establish a new decision making body, the supervisory board, 
in which all the representatives of the National Banking Authority will, uh, will uh, sit, including, of course, that one of the uh, Maltan uh, National Authority, will be four ECB representatives, will be also a steering committee. Very importantly, the voting in this browser board will be on uh, pro capita. So will be, the most decision will be taken on simple majority voting according to the members. So it means that uh, Malta will have one vote like all the other countries. There is a specific decision-making procedure for an euro member state country, but this is not much of interest for you. There is basically was provided for a kind of right of uh, objection for non euro era country to counter the fact that the governing council is making, uh, uh, let's say, final adoption of the decision as far as the board. But I will skip this for a time. One of the most important uh, issues stemming from the negotiation was the need for a separation between supervisor and monetary policy function. This was actually an argument that was uh, for many years used against uh, giving uh, any powers, as far as the power, to central banks because possible conflict of interest between monetary policy and supervisor. This was uh, addressed by the same regulation by providing will be a separation, internal separation between staff also as a guard of information to be, let's say, shared within the ECB. It will be also a mediation panel. So if uh, the supervisory board is sending a supervisory decision to the governing council, and the governing council object, because they have the power to object, it does not adopt, then uh, a mediation panel could be triggered that will try to mediate between what could be the, let's say, the monetary policy view and the supervisory policy view. Also, very importantly, the ECB independence in South Garden by ensuring the financial independence because uh, there will be supervisory fees. So the supervisory, uh, let's say, uh, function will be subsidized by banks. There will be a system of supervisory fees to be published. Again, there will be also a public, a public consultation on the regulation that will uh, determine the modality for the payment of the fees by credit institution. There are rules concerning the personal independence of uh, the members of the Board of the Steering Committee. There will be also a code of conduct for ECB staff. The ECB accountability will be strengthened. This is also a very important element. So there, there, are, there is a new framework according to which uh, the, uh, there will be an annual report of supervision, but also the chair of the Board of Board will be reporting to the European Parliament, will be reporting also to the Eurogroup, and also the National Parliament, these are very new things, may request the ECB to reply in writing to request, invite also the chair to participate in a change of view. So these are very new things, the National Parliament will have the right to, um, let's say, to ask the chair of the board to come here and to give, uh, let's say, uh, information about the activity ongoing. As regards the way in which the activity will be done, uh, I can assure you that the idea is to fully use uh, the uh, staff from national authorities. So it's very important, as was uh, also mentioned before, it's very important to give the proximity in supervision. We are very much aware of that. And also the idea is to have uh, an arrangement to ensure an appropriate exchange of staff with uh, and among the national authority. And uh, so the framework which we are building up will be one in which uh, is not, uh, the supervision will not just made, uh, let's say, very far away in Frankfurt, but will be really very much based on national countries. It will be uh, preserved, uh, let's say, the day-to-day -day relationship will be such to preserve what is now the day-to-day, -day, let's say, activity. Finally, some words about the uh, preparatory activity we are doing. There are a lot of, uh, is, a, is a immense work that we are doing. And uh, pending the final adoption of SSM regulation, no final decision is taken, because that's very much our position. Until there is a publication on the official journal, we cannot take any formal decision. The first decision is the establishment of the Supervisory Board. Notwithstanding that, uh, we started all the preparatory activity. They include the mapping of which banks are in the euro area. I mean, it's, it's still, <laughs> it's very difficult, so the, because there are different notions of credit institutions across the European Union. There are also, uh, you can imagine, plenty of legal issues uh, here around uh, uh, how to establish a framework, how the sanction regime will work, and so on. There is then the, all the work concerning the preparation of a new supervisory manual and uh, the definition of supervisory model. And then there is uh, the definition of a reporting templates that, however, will be very much in line with what we have now. 
In terms of next step, uh, we have uh, um, now in a process in which, uh, as I say, we are waiting for the final establishment uh, of the uh, final adoption of a regulation. Then there will be a lot of uh, regulation acts that are coming out. As I said, it will be very important uh, to have in the public consultation that will be concerning those legal acts. It will be very important to have a point of view of a, of a finance uh, market uh, and uh, to uh, be sure that we are getting right. And uh, this is an immense project on which we are very committed. And uh, I'm very pleased to be here to explain uh, also very briefly the main elements. Many thanks.